Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and today we're taking a look at another installment of How to Sack Her Queen. Alright, here we go. This is going to be a very nice game with Maurice Ashley versus Sunil. Oof, I'm not going to even try to pronounce this last name. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this game. It was a very nice game and this one is about understand the position. And what do I mean by that? Even though our pieces all have values at the beginning of the game, the pawn structure really plays a big role into it. Even not only the pawn structure, but how active your pieces are. In this case, we're going to be seeing some ugly rooks here that really are just not worth their uh, th their own weight in gold, if you will. So here, let's take a look at this game. We start with e4, d6, d4, g6. We got the modern over here, or a perk, whichever way you like to put it. Knight c3, bishop g7, bishop b3, pawn to c6. Queen to d2, I like this idea. This is uh, one of those ideas that you play. This is called the 150 attack. Basically, you're just going to be playing queen d2, bishop uh, e3. I recommend this for a lot of beginners. Typically, you'll castle queenside and, you know, just try trade over here, especially if they castle kingside fast. All right, b5 got played. Looks like black is not going to be castling kingside anytime soon and is preparing to do their own attack on the queenside. Pawn f3, knight to d7, pawn h4. Again, Maurice has a very simple plan. I'm going to attack your kingside. h5 got played, knight h3. The development continues. Knight to b6, knight to g5, a good square for this knight. You can see here that the knight's not so easily kicked unless black really wants to create some weaknesses over here. For instance, something like f6, you see g6 becomes weak and the e6 square. So black, of course, did not do this. Instead, rook b8 got played. Here, knight to d1. Here, white's in no hurry to castle queenside. I made this mistake quite a bit. Castling queenside here, black is ready to send these pawns down the board. So here, your king's actually safer in the center. So knight d1, looking to bring the knight over to the king's side. And also, the c4 square is a little bit annoying. Later on, we might play something like b3 just to kick it away. Pawn to d5, bishop to f4. Nice little tempo off the rook over here. Rook to b7, pawn to e5. I'm loving this pawn structure for white. Knight to h6, bishop to d3, knight to f5. You can see here that black is doing a good job by playing on the light squares with his pieces. And here, well, the bishop's not doing too much work. So bishop takes f5, bishop takes f5, and knight to e3. Here, white has a decent little advantage here. But black tries to get a little tricky here and plays knight c4. Uh oh, I think, I think you guys know what time it is. White to move, what do we do here? Remember, when you're looking at these positions, look about every move, especially queen sack ones, because, well, this is going to be how to sack your queen. And, of course, you can already guess it. Here it was knight takes f5. This was the only move to hold the advantage. Here, if you play something else, let's just say queen to e2 over here. Well, black's very much happy to go ahead and play something like knight takes on e3. And it doesn't matter if you take back with your bishop or your queen. You see here it's really hard to kind of push forward. Maybe g4 in the future over here. But even then, it's Black's turn. Black will play something like queen to d7 or queen c8 here, and g4 will not be played anytime soon. And Black is just holding back White's attack. So here, if you want to play for the win, well, you got to play for the win. You got to play knight takes f5. You're sacrificing your queen. Oof. Believe it or not, this is the best move in the position, and White is a plus 1.5 advantage. Knight takes queen because what else? And here, well, White's just winning. Knight takes on g7 here and king to d7. Remember, work on your calculations here. Hopefully you see that king f8 was immediately losing this game. White to move, what do you play here? Remember, your rules, know your tactics if you're going to be playing. For queen sex here, we would play the beautiful knight to e6 check here. Pawn takes knight check, and we're going to be winning our queen back, plus we're going to be winning an extra piece here. Easily winning position. So here, black king went to d7. Remember, look for those forced moves. Pawn to e6 check, a very important move to play here, just because, well, if you don't play it and play something like king to king takes on d2, black plays e6 here. Yes, knight takes f7 gets played, but it's going to restrict your bishop here. So here, white, uh, white wisely plays pawn to e6 here, check attacking the king, and you can see you're going to win this pawn back either way, but here it's good that we opened up our bishop here too. We could take this knight at our leisure. All right, king to c8 got played, and here another nice calculation, king takes d2, is good but even better here well pawn takes on f7 notice here we control the queening square with knight to e6 to come in the future again know your positions here look at the rooks these are the worst pieces on the board and then you look at the knights and evaluate them and the bishop these are much much better pieces here black never really is able to get out of this all right here we go knight back to c4 because well why be down a piece but look at this knight even though it looks good because it's on a good outpost there's no critical squares or good ideas behind this. All right, knight to e6. We're going to win back a rook easily here because where does the queen move? 
She has to run away, so she's going to go ahead and try to check. King to f2 here, no fear. Uh, the king is uh, very nicely placed on f2 here, and the rooks are now connected here. Okay, queen to b4. Black is in a terrible posi position. In fact, it's plus 7 here already. And here white um, is able just to stop all of black's attack. Again, these rooks are so bad. Know the position and know the value of your pieces. Here, these knights are definitely the best pieces on the board. And here, black is just struggling to get any kind of attack in. Now here, well, play simple chess, pawn to b3. It's not even about defending the pawn. It's just about kicking the knight away and also not letting the queen get in. Because if the queen does get in, you know, um, winning some pawns over here means a pass pawn can be created. But white's doing it just a great job here and just killing all the counterplay here for black. All right, knight to d6 got played. And here, pawn to c3. Look at this. Here, again, don't be greedy and just play... Uh, pawn up to queen. Look at this rook. It is worthless. In fact, the rook can't move anywhere because this pawn will just queen. So here, why waste time? Here, look for the attack, and that's when Maurice smells blood. He plays pawn to c3 here. Queen takes on c3, and here the idea was to attack the c6 pawn. So what do you play? Rook h to c1. Only move here. Queen to b2 check, and the king goes to f1. Here, rook takes c6 check is just devastating because where does the king go? Oof, only to b8 here, which looks quite terrible. Here, black played rook to b6 to guard the c6 pawn. Rook to b1, queen takes on a2. A nice little tricky move here because, well, why, would it, why wouldn't Reese want to lose a pawn here? Well, Maurice has ideas for this rook. Rook back to a1, and now you see that the a file is open, and we're going to win this pawn back. And, well, this rook's just going to be very, very active here. All right, queen takes on b3 because what else? Even if you do play something like queen to b2, um, the queen does not put any pressure on the bishop, um, on the rook, because the bishop is protecting. All right, well, queen takes on b3, rook takes on a7. The game is pretty much over here. These pieces are far too active for this uh, lone individual queen. Again, bad piece, bad piece. This knight's just defending. And this queen, although as powerful as she is, there's nothing unprotected for her to attack. Everything, if you look in this position, is being protected except for this rook over here. Uh, but that rook can, can take care of himself. Rook b7 to play, and now it was white to move and win. What do you play in this position? Simple chess. Hopefully you push pause. Hopefully you try to figure it out. It's just rook takes on b7 here. You can also look at rook takes on c6 check, but here the king goes to b8 here, and well, after king to b8, well, the game's going to survive for quite, uh, for quite a few more moves. With that being said, rook takes b7, best move, and knight takes on b7 here. What was wrong with king takes on b7? Hopefully you see it. Knight c5 check, losing your queen. You can definitely resign in this position right here. So the knight took on b7, and now it was just forced checkmate with rook takes c6. Here the king has only one option. It runs to d7, and it's game over right here. Rook to c7 for check and mate. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Remember, and understand the position whenever you're doing a queen sec. Look at the activity of your pieces and also your opponents. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>